Okay, so this is section 2.5, which is complex zeros and the fundamental theorem of algebra. We're going to talk about the two major theorems, complex conjugate zeros and factoring with real number coefficients. Okay, so the fundamental theorem of algebra says that a polynomial function of degree n has n complex zeros. Some of those zeros may be repeated. So basically what this means is that if I have a fifth degree polynomial, so something like 3x to the fifth minus 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1. Okay, so I have any random um, polynomial function. The degree, so the highest power of x tells me how many zeros I'm going to have. So this example that I just wrote down would have five zeros. Now what we don't know is those could be a combination of, they could be all real zeros, they could be some real, some, some complex, you could have repeated zeros. So it's just saying that all together you will have five zeros for that polynomial. Linear factorization, similar thing. It says if f of x is a polynomial function of degree n greater than 0, then f of x has precisely n linear factors. So if you have a degree n polynomial, you're going to have n linear factors. So that just means you can factor your polynomial into um, five different factors where it's x minus or x plus the zeros. So polynomial connections in the complex case. So we've kind of talked about this already. X equals K is a solution of the, fun of the equation F of X equals zero. Um, so basically if you set it equal to zero and solve, then you're finding the solution. K is the solution, X equals, zero, or X equals K. K is a zero of the function F and X minus K is a factor. So understanding that when you write it like this, it's a factor. When you write it as a value like just k or x equals k, it's a solution or a root. Okay, so example one is we're going to write the polynomial function f of x equals x minus 3i times x plus 3i in standard form and identify the zeros and the x-intercepts. So if I write this out here, we have f of x equals x minus 3i x plus 3i. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to foil this out here. So this would be x times x is x squared, x times 3i is 3i x, negative 3i times x is minus 3i x, and then negative 3i times 3i would be minus 9i squared. So then I get, these are going to cancel, and we know that i squared is same as multiplying by negative 1. So this would be x squared plus 9. So that is what those factors multiplied out look like in standard form. So it's asking us the zeros. Well, the zeros are easiest to find when we're looking in the factored form. So our zeros would be 3i and negative 3i. But then our x-intercepts, on this graph, we know that our two zeros are complex. They're imaginary numbers. So that means that we would not have an x-intercept. So this would look like a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis, like something like that. Okay, so this has no x-intercepts, but it does have zeros, and those zeros are complex, and again, you can see we have two zeros and our degree of our polynomial is two, so that matches. Okay, so complex conjugate zeros. So what this is saying is if you have a complex zero of a polynomial, then its conjugate also has to be a zero. So you can't have a single complex zero by itself. So if I have a polynomial where three i is a zero, then negative 3i also has to be a 0. If I have a um, polynomial where 2 minus 4i is a 0, then 2 plus 4i also has to be a 0. Okay, so this one is a long one. Okay, so we are going to 
find a polynomial from given zeros. So we have three given zeros, negative three, three minus i, and two plus five i. However, two of those are complex. So we know that their conjugates also need to be zeros, which means we also have to have three plus i, oops, and two minus five i. Okay, so this is kind of a long process here. So the first step I'm going to do is write them as factors. So this would be x plus three, that's taking care of this one right here. Then I'm gonna take care of the three minus i and the three plus i. So I'm gonna write this as x minus, that's how we write factors, three minus i, and x minus three plus i. Okay, so that took care of those. Then we have x minus two plus five i and x minus two minus five i. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of ignore the x plus three out front. We're gonna just keep it there. We're not gonna do much with it until we get to further steps here. Um, so then I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to group the x and the real part and leave the imaginary part separated. So I'm going to write this as x minus 3. And then if I distribute, that becomes plus i. And then I'm going to write this as x minus 3. And if I distribute, that becomes minus i. Then I have x minus 2 minus 5i, and this becomes x minus 2 plus 5i. So the reason I did that is so that I have a real part and an imaginary part, and we know that these are conjugates, So what and so are these. So what happens, how I can tell, because the x minus 3 part is the same, and then one's plus i, one's minus i. Here, one's minus 5i, one's plus 5i. So we know those are complex conjugates, and we know what happens when we multiply two complex conjugates together, the middle terms cancel out. So that's gonna save me from having to do a gigantic multiplication here. Um, we'll save that for the end of the problem. So right now, so I can write what I get. So if I multiply this out, it's gonna be the first term squared, which would be three. It's going to be i times negative i, which is negative i squared, but we know negative i squared is just plus one. Okay, so again, remember i squared equals negative one, so when I have um, minus i squared, that'd be plus one. Okay, now over here, we're going to have x minus two squared, and then we're going to have minus 25 i squared. Well, minus 25 i squared would be the same as saying plus 25. Okay, so on the next step here, I'm going to FOIL stuff out and, and add the one. So this would become x, x squared minus 3x minus 3x, that'd be minus 6x plus 9 plus 1. So this would be x squared minus 6x, and then we'd have a negative 3 times negative 3 is 9, and then we're going to add that one right there. So that'd be plus 10. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to FOIL this out. So x squared and then we'd have minus 2x minus 2x, so it'd be minus 4x plus 4, and then plus the 25, so it'd be plus 29. Okay, so now I'm going to do some magic here and to give you the final answer. So this is awful. This is where it gets tedious. So you would multiply the x plus 3 times the first parentheses. You get that answer, and then you'd multiply it by this end parentheses. So just because I don't want this video to be like 45 minutes long, I'm in a shortcut here and just give you the final answer. So this would be x to the fifth minus 7x to the fourth plus 33x cubed minus 25x squared minus 352x plus 870. Oops. Okay, that's a zero. Kind of a weird zero. Okay. So that is our final answer. If you have questions about how to multiply in that last step and need help with that, just let me know. And I left a blank screen in case I needed to go on to that next screen. Okay, 
So our next example is we're going to write this as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors, each with real coefficients. Okay, so irreducible quadratic factors. I'm going to show you a final step here too. So I always would start with P over Q. So our P is 9, so we say plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 9. And then our leading coefficient is 3, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. So that means my possible rational zeros would be 1, 3, 9, and 1 third. And then I would go to the graph. So if we switch over, let's go to Desmos real quick here. So we're going to type in 3x to the fifth plus x to the fourth. Oops. Minus 24x cubed. minus 8x squared, oops, <laughs> minus 27x, minus 9. Okay, so you can see it looks like we're crossing at negative 3, negative 1 third, and 3. All of those are in our... Um, P over Q list, our, pretend, our possible rational zeros. So I'm going to write down negative 3, negative 1 third, and 3. So we would start with, so we have 3, 1, negative 24, negative 8, negative 27, negative 9. And we're going to start with negative 3. So this would be 3, negative 9, negative 8, 24, 0, 0, negative 8, positive 24, negative 3, 9, and 0. Okay, so that one worked. So now you can only keep going with the result of your synthetic division if it worked. If the first value you tried doesn't work, you need to start over again. Um, but since this worked, we can just treat this, so rather than write it again, we can just keep going. So I have negative 1 third now, so this would be 3, this would be negative 1, this would be negative 9, which would be positive 3, 3, negative 1, negative 9, 3, 0, and that one also works. Okay, let's see if I can squeeze one more in here. Okay, so then we're going to try 3. So we bring down the 3. This would be 9, so 0, 0, 3, 9, and 0. Okay, so this says as a product of linear and irreducible quadratic factors. So what we're left with here at the bottom is 3x squared plus 3. So those are going to be complex. So if we're going by the directions here, I did it slightly different in the notes. But written as a, actually I didn't write it in the notes, now I will go add that. Okay, so, linear, so if I do it as linear and irreducible quadratic factors, it would be I have a blank page here. So it would be x minus x plus 3, x plus 1 third, x minus 3, and then 3x squared plus 3. So that right there is what it asked us to do. This is a product of these are your linear factors. This is your irreducible quadratic factor. Now, if we want to take it a final step and write it as... Um, all a product of linear factors, we can subtract the 3. So this would be 3x squared equals negative 3, which means x squared equals negative 1, which means that x is plus or minus i, because we're square rooting. Okay, so that would be, we'd write this as x plus 3, x plus 1 third, x minus 3, x minus i, and x plus i. So that would be a product of linear factors. 
So this would be irreducible quadratic. The final step would be linear factors. Okay. Final thing is it's saying that if your polynomial is odd, then you have to have at least one real zero. And that's because if you think about it, complex zeros come in pairs. So even if you have two complex zeros, you can't have just a complex zero by itself without its um, conjugate. So therefore, the third zero would have to be real or the fifth zero. So that's just something to think about when you're doing these problems. Know that like in our example back here, so this was a fifth, um, fifth degree and we did find five zeros. We found negative three, negative one third and three, that's three. And then we had I and negative I. So we had two complex and three real. Okay, this, some of these are kind of um, long and if you have any questions about any parts, let me know.